And we are back now. Hopefully this video is reaching you at the correct time. Uh, YouTube had a lot of issues handling my reaction to the Barcelona game last night. It was supposed to go up at about quarter past ten. Didn't end up going out till beyond midnight. So if you have missed last night's reaction to Manchester United's win over Barcelona, then make sure to check that video out. It will be available at the end of this video or on the, as the previous video on this channel. So like I say, hopefully... This video will be out at the appropriate time, either 9 o'clock or half 9 UK time if you are watching it. And yeah, it's game week 25. It's predictions time once again. But we only have eight games to talk about this week due to the League Cup final, meaning that Manchester United against Brighton and Newcastle Brentford have been postponed until a later date. Uh, as for the League Cup final itself, I'm just going to do my own separate video for that. So look out for that video on Sunday morning for my... Brief chat about what I think is going to happen in the League Cup final. Uh, it makes more sense in my head to do that, especially as a Manchester United fan. It gives me more chance to actually talk about that game and my hopes for it, as well as my overall prediction. So, League Cup final prediction on Sunday. But as for today, it is our usual process, running down the eight Premier League fixtures for this weekend. A quick reminder before we get into it to drop a like on the video if you haven't done so already and subscribe to the channel. We have been uploading so much over the last few days. It has been absolutely crazy and we're going to continue to do so. We're going to do FA Cup predictions next week as well. So make sure you are subscribed because it's going to be non-stop content probably until the end of the season. Let's look ahead to the first game, which is actually tonight in the Premier League between Fulham and Wolves. So the first Friday night football for a little while. And again, if you've missed the fantasy football video, that came up yesterday because of tonight's game. We wanted to get that video out for you nice and early. And like I said, it's Fulham against Wolves in the Friday night football. And based off of what I've seen, particularly in the last couple of weeks, there realistically is only going to be one winner in this one. And that is going to be Fulham. To get the win away at Brighton is a fantastic result in itself. And Wolves, despite a good start under Lopetegui, haven't been the best in their last couple of games. So I'm back in Fulham to get the win tonight. I'm going to go for 2-0. I really don't see Wolves scoring. So inevitably, they will score. But I don't see Wolves scoring, and I'm going to go for 2-0 to Fulham in that one. No early kickoff on Saturday, again due to the postponement of other fixtures. So we jump straight to the 3 o'clock kickoffs, and we start with Everton up against Aston Villa. Everton, who have been immaculate at home under Sean Dyche since he took over, and Aston Villa, who despite scoring goals in recent games, have been really struggling defensively. So it's an interesting one to call. I'm going to back Everton to do exactly what they've done in their last two home games. And that is get a 1-0 win at home once again. Like I say, Aston Villa have been attacking relatively well. But Everton's defence, particularly at home, just hasn't looked like conceding in the last few games. They were poor against Liverpool. But like I say, that was away in a Merseyside derby. So at home, with the fans behind them once again, I'm going to back them to get the clean sheet once again. And like I say, the way Villa have been defending recently, even with... Everton's depleted attack, I would expect them to end up getting the win. On to Leeds and Southampton. Leeds, who I believe have appointed Javi Gracia now. Uh, I know there's been some complications with the government regarding work permit issues. And Southampton, of course, also still looking for a new manager after sacking Nathan Jones. But the caretaker manager going in and winning at Chelsea has done a massive wonders for his potential of taking over full time. It's a really interesting one to call. It's a massive relegation battle. I think both sides potentially in or certainly around the relegation zone going into this game. I'm going to go for Leeds and obviously I went for Chelsea last week and that ended up backfiring. Southampton defended fantastically in that one but I think given the pressure on this game, like the Chelsea game for Southampton was just a complete free hit and it's a fantastic for them, result for them to get it. This is now a game that Southampton actually have to win. So I think there's a little bit more pressure. I think the game will be a little bit more open because of that. And I'm going to go for 2-1 to Leeds. I really think all three results are possible in this one. So we'll see what happens. But right now I've done the classic. I'm not really sure. So I've just gone for a 2-1 home win. But that is also my genuine prediction. I think Leeds just about take this one. On to Leicester against Arsenal. A game that I am 
a bit surprised isn't being televised, but it is what it is. Those are the games that were chosen for television this week. But it is Leicester against Arsenal. Leicester, who were on a fantastic run of form going into the game at Old Trafford last week before being dispatched 3-0 by Manchester United. However, they were very good in those opening 15 to 20 minutes and could have been 2 or 3-0 up if it wasn't for David De Gea's save. So this isn't just going to be a walk in the park for Arsenal. I mean, obviously they got the... 4-2 win in the end against Aston Villa last week after really struggling at the start of the game. So if Leicester start the way they started at Old Trafford and Arsenal start the way they started at Villa Park, this could end up being a very, very close, tight game. There are slight injury concerns over James Madison again, though, which is obviously a massive loss for Leicester if he's unavailable. Over the overall balance of play, I still think Arsenal take this one. I'm going to go for 3-1. Like I say, it wouldn't surprise me to see Leicester get a result, but... I think, given the fact that City dropped points and Arsenal got that massive win on the comeback, it, I think it's just probably revitalised their energy and their belief that they can win this Premier League title. And results like what happened with Aston Villa, albeit through sheer luck of the Jorginho off the post, onto the goalkeeper, and Nketiah was in an offside position blocking the goalkeeper's view and it wasn't given. Those are the sort of things that just sort of get you back on track. So I think there's a good chance for Arsenal to extend their lead at the top of the table. Um, well, it won't be because Man City are playing at the... No, they're not. They'll, be, they'll extend their lead at the top of the table before Manchester City play. Manchester City playing a later kickoff. So I've got an opportunity for Arsenal to extend their lead. I'm going to back them to do so and I'm going to go for 3-1. The final of the three o'clock kickoffs sees West Ham take on Nottingham Forest. Again, I just sort of go on the things that I've said about Forest over the last few weeks. Fantastic at home, not very good away. West Ham in desperate, desperate need of a win in this one, but they've started to show signs that they're getting better. They weren't at their best last week, but they still look relatively threatening against Spurs at times. So against Nottingham Forest. I'm going to back West Ham to get the win. I'm going to go for 2-0 to West Ham in this one. But yeah, the way they're playing at the moment and as good as Forrest have played recently, it wouldn't surprise me to see Forrest get something in that one as well. But right now, I've got to go for West Ham to take this one. On to the first of the evening games, the 7.30 game. Let's say 7.30, 5.30 game, 17.30 with your 24-hour clock. It's Bournemouth and Man City and... Look, Bournemouth have had a couple of good results over the last couple of weeks. 1-1 draw with Brentford, 1-0 win away at Wolves. Manchester City, on the other hand, have had some very poor results. 1-0 with Nottingham Forest in a game that they should have won easily. 1-0 against RB Leipzig in a game that they should have been out of sight in in the first half. And Leipzig pulled them back in the second half and managed and deservedly got the 1-1 draw Leipzig in the end. So... I don't think this is as easy as it seems. Bournemouth are obviously fighting for their lives. They want to build on their last couple of results. And any side in the Premier League is tough to beat away from home. So I don't think this is going to be as easy as Manchester City turn up and just win because they're Manchester City. Up until a few weeks ago, I would have still said that. But you have to look at recent results and say Manchester City just aren't quite fully at it at the moment. So... I'm going to be a little bit more cautious. I'm not going to go crazy and say Manchester City win this 5 or 6 nil because they're more than capable of doing so if they turn up. But I just don't quite see it happening this week. I'm going to go for 3-0. I don't really see Bournemouth scoring. I still think, even if Man City are not at their best, they have enough quality on the pitch to get a couple. Or potentially, as I say, I've gone for 3-0 against Bournemouth. But it remains to be seen. Bournemouth are fighting for their lives. City just don't seem to have their full-on cutting edge yet this season. So... We'll see what happens, but I'm going to go for 3-0. The final game on Saturday, a 7.45 kickoff, sees Crystal Palace taking on Liverpool. And this really is a toss of the coin. I think this is the hardest prediction to make this week. I really do, um, with the possible exception of Leeds-Southampton. Crystal Palace haven't been playing amazing, but I've been having glimpses of brilliance and have been scoring goals at crucial times, but not quite getting the results. Liverpool have looked like they've turned a corner with the 2-0 win against Everton, the 2-0 win against Newcastle, and going 2-0 up against Real Madrid. But then they conceded five at Anfield, and that just throws everything into doubt. Now, they have this game and the game against Wolves to sort of put themselves back in a position going into the Manchester United game at Anfield next weekend. And obviously, as a United fan, I hope they do terribly in both games in that lead-up, but... They need to take this as an opportunity to try and rebuild some momentum once again. 
I would back them to get the fast start. That's the one thing I've said about Liverpool in the last couple of games. They, Even though they lost to Real Madrid, the start against Newcastle, the start against Real Madrid, they looked better in those opening 20 minutes. So if they can have a start like that against Crystal Palace, I don't think Palace have about enough to overcome Liverpool over the remainder of the game. So with that said, I'm going to go for 2-1 to Liverpool. I've scrolled the wrong way. There we go. I'm going to go for 2-1 to Liverpool, but... Yeah, from what I saw in that Real Madrid game, if the likes of Eze and Elise can get running at Liverpool's defence, potentially this could go bad for them once again. But I'm just going to back them this time. I'm going to be generous to them. Um, obviously, like I say, I hope they lose, but I'm just going to give this one to them. But we will see what happens. And the final Premier League game of the weekend. There are, of course, more fixtures in midweek, which we will cover when we do our FA Cup videos. The final game of the weekend sees Tottenham take on Chelsea in the early kickoff on Sunday before the League Cup final. And based on current form, the only real outcome I can see happening here is a Tottenham win. So I'm not going to delay it. I'm just going to say it's going to be 2 0 to Spurs. Chelsea just don't look like scoring. And. You know, it's a case of when that first goal goes in, maybe everything will start turning around for them. But Tottenham have been very, very solid. You know, they've got the clean sheet at home to Man City. They've got the clean sheet at home to West Ham. So these are teams that normally do score goals even when they play badly. So the fact that Chelsea aren't scoring tells me that realistically, they're probably not going to score against Spurs this weekend. And with the amount of attacking quality Spurs have available to them, even though they're not playing particularly great at the moment either, I think they'll end up scoring against Chelsea. So I'm going to go for 2-0 to Spurs. Don't think I need to say anything else about that one. And that is going to be it for today. As always, let me know down in the comments your thoughts on my predictions. And of course, let me know your predictions for this weekend's games as well. Like I said, we'll have a separate League Cup video on Sunday morning to talk about my predictions for that. And then next week, we're going to have our first ever FA Cup predictions alongside the remaining fixtures for game week 25. Thank you very much for watching as always. I will be back with that video on Sunday morning. Thank you very much for watching.